For Oldsmobile, this season's hottest topic is the Aurora. But there's also important news about the rest of the Oldsmobile lineup for 1995. In this program, we'll look at the 1995 Achieva, 88, and Cutlass Supreme. We'll focus primarily on engine changes for the 88 and the Achieva. Hi, I'm Jim Scopolitas, and this is Anlin. She's here today on a Take Your Daughter to Work project, and she'll spend some time with us. Before we talk about new cars, let's review a new procedure, a new way of reporting product problems. Oldsmobile always needs your help to make our products better, and from now on, the process will be faster and easier with no paperwork to submit. Now service managers can simply phone in production problems that are discovered, so the word can be quickly passed on to the appropriate platform that same day, and any necessary changes can be made on the assembly line that same day. It's an exciting change that's already working. Same-day resolution of many product problems. And if your retailer subscribes to Oldsmobile Voicemail, the plant or vehicle platform can communicate directly back to you. The phone number to use and the procedure to follow, thank you, Anlin, are printed on a card that comes with this program. This card should be kept near the phone so that a message in this specific format can be called in whenever there's a new product problem to report. Now on to those new cars. This year, both the 88 and 98 have a new headlight flash to pass feature. It's controlled by pulling the turn signal, but stopping before it clicks into brights. Shoulder belts for the rear seat have new comfort guides, which allow adjusting the belt for shorter people. This year, electronic level control comes back for the 88 LSS. But in 1995, the big change for the 88 and the 98 is their new base engine, the 3800 Series 2. It's similar to the 3800 in general design, but it's almost totally new. The only parts that haven't changed are the valve covers. The 3800 Series 2 is the lead story in this video. The new engine provides swift, easy acceleration over a wide range of speeds while increasing fuel economy. It's also considerably quieter. All this was accomplished by reworking a simple engine design for even more efficiency. Many engine parts now have less mass, but contribute to increased power. In the valve train, for example, the new intake valves are lighter, with smaller diameter stems than those in the earlier engine. But they have larger heads to match larger ports for increased airflow. A throttle body with a wider bore and a redesigned intake manifold also contribute to more airflow. The new cylinder block is an inch shorter. It's lighter, stiffer, and quieter with better performance and fuel economy. Let's look at the differences in output. Here are the horsepower curves for the 94 3800 and for the new 3800 Series 2. That's a 21% increase in maximum horsepower from 170 to 205. And at wide open throttle, the 1-2 shift goes from 5,200 RPM to 5,750. And here are the curves for torque for the 3800 and the 3800 Series 2. Torque is increased across the board. Oldsmobile calls the new engine a torquer with a twist because it combines the low throttle and part throttle liveliness of a sophisticated push rod engine with the high RPM performance you'd expect of the latest dual overhead cam engine. GM's 3.8 liter engine has come a long way since 1985. All these changes add up to some very interesting history. Here's the horsepower story over the past 10 years. Notice the huge jump for this year's 3800 Series 2. Here's the story of comparative torque, another staircase upward. And yet, in spite of all these improvements in performance, fuel economy has also continued to climb. That 26.4 composite miles per gallon 
for the Series 2 translates to an estimated 29 on the highway. I'll mention only a few of the engine's interesting new features. One is the rerouted accessory drive belt. On the older 3800, the coolant pump is driven by the tension side of the belt. So the crankshaft pulls the belt across the pump with maximum force. But on the Series 2, the coolant pump is pushed by the slack side of the belt with maybe one-sixth as much force. That should dramatically increase the life of the pump bearing and the pump itself. Here's a change at the rear of the engine. To this basic 3800 design, the Series 2 adds a crankshaft rear oil seal housing, also called the rear cover, and its gasket. The rear cover holds the rear crankshaft oil seal and eliminates the need for rear main bearing cap side seals. Correctly lining up this cover on the engine block requires a special tool, a rear cover aligner, number J41349, which fits over the crankshaft. Instructions for using it are in the reference guide that comes with this program. Those instructions also stress correct installation of the cover's gasket. To avoid leaks here, where the cover meets the oil pan rail. The gasket should be exactly flush with the pan rail surface of the cover, or very slightly protruding. See the details in the reference guide. There's a change in the front cover, too. Here's the inner gear of the oil pump. In the Series 2, this new machined shoulder mates with the front cover, so the gear positions itself correctly each time the engine's assembled. No more risk of a knocking noise from this part. Here's something very important about disassembling the Series 2. You can't remove the entire intake manifold as a unit. The upper manifold must be removed first, so you can reach and remove two bolts that are hidden inside the lower manifold and hold it to the cylinder head. If you don't know about these bolts and don't remove them, any efforts to pry up the whole manifold will be useless and could cause damage. Let's do one more comparison of parts. Anlin's going to help. In a 3800 piston, the pin is fixed to the connecting rod, but the pin for the Series 2 piston is loose in relation to the rod. It turns in a bushing and is held in place by clips. These floating piston pins have less pin-to-bore clearance. That means less noise and better durability. The supercharged engine has floating piston pins, too. Incidentally, Series 2 pistons are smaller and considerably lighter than those on the older engine for better performance, emissions, and fuel economy. One reason the Series 2 is quieter is that all of the main bearing caps, except the rear one, are side bolted. This makes the engine stronger and stiffer. Here are those new side bolts. For the Series 2, these main bearing bolts are longer than those on the 3800 because the press fit dimension of the main bearing cap is longer. Because of this increased length, the main bearing caps now fit more tightly. In fact, a special tool is needed to pull them. Instructions for using this tool are also in the reference guide. There's a lot more that's new about the Series 2. Like its two knock sensors for quicker detection and correction of spark knock. But we'll stop with the new oil pan. Thanks, Anlin. It's made of two layers of steel with a sound deadening material laminated between them. This composite splash shield now incorporates a flange that has a silicone bead gasket built right into it. This design means a quieter engine and less chance of leaks from this area. That's enough on the 9588. Except to mention that it requires Dexron 3, the new automatic transmission fluid that supersedes all earlier Dexron products and is better able to handle temperature extremes. Dexron 3 will never need changing except under severe service conditions and then only every 50,000 miles. Those are the longest change intervals in the industry. 
It should be used in all hydromatic automatic transmissions built from day one through 1995 and into the future. Now a quick look at the Cutlass Supreme. In 1995, there are some sharp new colors and a new wheel cover for the 16-inch wheel. But the big change is the interior. This year, the Supreme has a new instrument panel with up-to-the-minute rounded flowing lines. Besides the driver's airbag, now there's one for the passenger, too. Amenities include the new GM family of radios, and comfort and audio controls are more conveniently laid out. The door trim has a new contemporary look, and all front speakers are now located in the doors. Dual zone temperature controls are an option for the passenger. Sedan front seat belts now attach to the B pillar and adjust for comfort. A sharp new console is also available as an option. What's new for the Cutlass Supreme's engines? This year, they both get a low oil sensor. For the 3.4 liter, 94 was the year of the big change to sequential fuel injection. But this year, to reduce engine noise, there's an improved timing belt tensioner actuator. This one reacts faster when engine speed drops. That means the belt is much less likely to whip and make noise. On the 1995 Achieva, the main news is under the hood. In the past, some quad four dual overhead cam engines have produced a vibration at higher RPM. Now that's been dramatically changed. A new balance shaft assembly mounted at the bottom of the engine between it and the oil pan counters the engine's tendency to vibrate. The assembly is chain driven by the crankshaft. Inside it, two shafts with weights on them are driven in opposite directions. Each time piston action drives the engine downward, the balance shaft assembly counters it with an upward thrust as the weights reach the top or engine side of the assembly. When piston action moves the engine upward, the weights reach the bottom of the assembly, giving the engine a downward thrust. Obviously, for all this to happen, the balance shafts must be accurately timed to the engine. Timing them and adjusting the tension of the chain are two procedures you'll need to know and perform during engine service. But note that for the first year, the Achieva's balance shaft engine will be exchanged if major service is necessary. Details about the exchange program will be covered in a service bulletin. For later on, when you are reassembling an engine, here's how to synchronize the balance assembly. Begin by moving the number one piston to top dead center and continue rotating 90 degrees. Next, at the front end of the unit, Turn the ends of the balance shafts so that their flat surfaces are at the bottom. To keep them from rotating farther when you tighten the assembly's driven sprocket, install tool J41088. Next, slide the sprocket onto the shaft and finger tighten its bolt, which is left hand threaded. If you're reinstalling the same sprocket, the same surface of it should be pointing outward. Marking it first before you disassemble it is the way to do that. Here's an important step. To protect the timing while you torque the bolt for the driven sprocket, install the chain guide so that it presses the chain really taut. And hold it there while you tighten its bolt. Then torque the driven sprocket bolt. Remember that left hand threading. Then loosen the chain guide so you can adjust chain tension. To do that, insert a 40 thousandths brass feeler gauge between the chain guide and the chain. The gauge must extend along the entire area of contact between the guide and the chain. Now press the guide against the chain while you tighten the guide's bolt to spec. 
Don't press the guide too firmly. About three pounds of hand pressure is right. Be sure to use a brass feeler gauge. Other kinds don't flex well enough for accurate tensioning. Now you've timed the assembly and adjusted tension, and you can remove that special tool. One more point. The new balance shafts make a big difference in engine quietness under load, but not at idle. Is the balance shaft assembly on this engine working right? At idle, no one could tell. It's only at higher RPM that the balance shaft assembly makes its big difference. Finally, in 95, there's something else Achiba owners will notice on the road. <laughs> Better cushioning at the rear axle. Through 94, rear axle springs were located slightly forward of the center line of the wheels. Beginning in mid-year 95, the rear springs will be positioned directly on the center line. Located here, they remove more of the harshness and noise of small impacts. Also, centered in the top of the spring, there's a new jounce bumper made of rubber and microcellular urethane. It helps cushion those really big bumps. Well, more comfort, more engine power and smoothness, more up-to-date good looks. In 1995 Oldsmobiles, there's plenty to make everyone sit up and take notice. I'll see you next time.